संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी पूर्ण पुरुषोत्तम धाम घनश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय For any religion, scriptures are the most important pillars of foundation. Just think about it. <clears throat> if there is everything in a religion, but if there is no scriptures, who would recognize that religion? Who would understand the philosophy that needs to be understood about that religion? And if there was no scriptures, then what would be the difference between one, one religion versus another religion? Meaning, the very identification code, you can say, of a religion is its scripture. How so? By reading its main scripture, you can say, one can understand the views, the perspectives. One can visualize the very, you can say, heart or the, or the very principles of that particular religion by reading its scriptures. A devotee of a religion is also molded by the words of the scriptures that one reads, one studies, so on and so forth. But in the Swaminarayan sect, scriptures are something more than you can say the foundation. They are you can say the most important element on observing one's religious vows, on realizing oneself and getting the knowledge, the proper tools and utensils to attain God. The scripture I want to talk to you about is extraordinary. Now after researching, after thinking about I found that scriptures spoken by Bhagwan Swaminarayan are very few, but there is more scriptures written by his saints. But out of all those scriptures, this is the only scripture where Bhagwan Swaminarayan has spoken and his saints have written down. Meaning, out of the 24 avatars, the incarnations, there has not been an incident or a time where that incarnation has spoken and his disciples have written down his words. The only incarnation of all incarnations, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, when he descended from his Akshardham to this earth, and spoke his nectar words to his disciples, saints, and devotees, they were compiled together. In that composition, before I tell you the exact name of this scripture, you probably have already guessed, for those who are more in-depth with the Swamiran sect. In this scripture, there is one section where it says, Nityanand Swami brought the manuscript and presented it to Sriji Swami. Sriji Maharaj. <laughs> Sriji Maharaj examined the manuscript and was extremely pleased. I apologize for that. Meaning, this was verified by Bhagwan himself. This isn't just a scripture where all the dis disciples read it, uh, written it down and then it was not shown to God himself. But this was verified by Bhagwan himself, God himself, proving it to be authentic and unique and the best, you can say, medicine for our disease in the form of natures, in the form of many, many different vices. That's why 
you're probably thinking, what is this scripture that you're describing all this time? Well, it's none other than the Vachnamrut. Today I want to talk to all of you about this scripture, tell you its importance, tell you why it's very, very essential to our Swamiran sect. Because you've probably heard from Rushi Swami or myself mention many, many you know verses from, oh, in Gadara, first chapter, 28th Vachnamrut, or Sarang for second chapter, this Vachnamrut said this, and many, many quotes from Maharaj himself. But if you don't know the importance of this scripture, then how are you going to understand its meaning or how are you going to hold its value in your heart? Just like how a person who is studying in high school, suppose you're studying history and your history teacher gives you a book to study and before giving the book, he just mentions a couple things about the book and even reads a couple lines from the book but he doesn't help you realize that this is what you're going to be studying to pass your examination this is what you're going to be studying throughout the whole year for your exams test pop quizzes for your homework so please pay attention to this book please study this book do not study any other books only when he tells you tells you this then you realize that there is a lot of value to this book that if I do not study this book then I won't get a grade at all because even if I take the exam I won't know any of the answers that's why the importance of any book that one picks up is essential for one to understand the background of it to understand exactly what it's trying to give you or what it's trying to say now there's two main scriptures in the Swamiran sect. Number one is the Shikshapatri. The Shikshapatri contains 212 verses and it's pretty much a code of conducts, meaning how to live your life, your character, how to move about society, how to interact with other people, how sh saints should live, how male devotees should live, how female devotees should live, etc., so on, so on. Pretty much it is kind of like a guide to your life, a manual for your life, how to live. We've already spoken about the Shikshat Patri and we already have already understood its importance. But on the other side, the Vachnamrut, what exactly is it? Pretty much it's the philosophy and the principles of Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself. Meaning, Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself used to conduct many, many kinds of sermons, or you can say discourses, in front of his devotees and saints and out of those various uh, you can say discourses Bhagwan himself spoke and his saints which we will talk about in the near future compiled and after compilation they pretty much made a book called the Vachnamrut and in this compilation this is just a very very you can say strict and it's not codes of conducts more so it's more about understanding of the whole religion how it is its inner core its its values its principles and its philosophy and if by understanding this philosophy then everything else will come and one will attain akshardham after this life that's why it's necessary to make the vachnamrut one's own life you can say. So let's take a deeper look inside the word itself. Vachanamrut, if you break it up, vachan means words, amrut means essence or nectar. Meaning the words that are inside are like nectar or essence for one's life, one's spiritual life to say particularly, to mold and to relate one's life or to get related or get connected with Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush, more so. So at that time, about 200 years ago, over 2,000 discourses were noted by saints in the time of Sriji Maharaj. And out of those 2,000, 262 of them 
were approved by Maharaj himself, meaning verified, and they were compiled to make the Vachnamrut. The 262 Vachnamruts were delivered between. Now I'm just going to give you a couple of dates here and there just to kind of prove that it's authentic, it's authentic and it's unique uniqueness. From November 26, 1819 to July 25, 1829, a 10-year span, you can say. And pretty much in this time, there were many, many discourses. As I said, over 2,000 were narrated and compiled by saints. But 262 were selected and approved by Maharaj himself. And it was in this 10-year span. Now, Maharaj was only on this earth for 49 years. But in this 10-year span, out of the 2,000 discourses, the 262 discourses that he has verified, approved, selected, were so and are so important that our Puja Guruji says that suppose that someone is ill and someone needs medicine. I'm talking about in a spiritual stance, not a physical stance. That if someone is ill, where someone's nature, so bows, are hurting him, bothering him, or he has some kind of other internal issue, or an issue of following codes of conduct, or an issue of uh, staying attached with God and his Ekantik Satpurush, and st staying detached from this earth. So many different kinds of formulas and whatnot. All these kinds of problems that one has to relate with. Our Puja Guruji says there is not even one disease in the form which I have mentioned that the Vachnamrut cannot solve. That's how much of an aid, that's how much of an antidote the Vachnamrut exactly is to a spiritual devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So, more so, the book records the dialogues conversation between God and his disciples answering philosophical and religious questions explaining doc doctrines formulating terminology and co concerning both uh, practical points of view in daily life and spiritual sadhana and this was just a definition that I got out of a book of exactly what the Vachamur does and what it is and it's more of a scientific but Pretty much it just explains the philosophy and the principles of Bhagwan himself. The language itself is in Gujarati, uh, the native language of Gujarat, which is uh, West India. And from that time, Bhagwan himself, when he was no converting, he traveled the whole India. But after arriving in Gujarat, the state, he stayed there the remaining of his life, which was on earth. and. There, he conducted all these Vachnamruts. Now, as I was saying, I mentioned that there were compilers, saints, that compiled this Vachnamrut, particularly naming Sadguru Muktanand Swami, Sadguru Gopan Swami, Sadguru Nityanand Swami, and Sadguru Shukanand Swami. These are the four saints, and uh, just a brief profile on these santos, we must also understand, because obviously, if Bhagwan himself, the Supreme, him, so, the Supreme Lord himself, is saying these Vajramruts, who is capable, who is strong enough, you can say, who is most, you can say, revered and most, uh, you can say, viable to write these scriptures down, to compile these scriptures, it's none other than these four saints that Bhagwan himself has selected, and starting out with Sadhguru Muktanand Swami, he is known as the mother of our fellowship. And out of all the whole Vachramrut, Swami has asked the most questions, 91 to be particular, in the Vachramrut. And he has asked so many questions to Maharaj, even if he knew the answer to them, not for himself, but for the other devotees in the future, of the future, so that they would see Bhagwan's perspective. They would see that how Maharaj would like them to become. That's why by his daya, by his grace, by his kindness, Sadguru Muktan Swami has asked over, nine, or na, over 90 <coughs> questions 
particularly 91 questions in the Vatsarmud for our own benefit. Also, he was considered to be the guru of Maharaj, not formally, but informally. Maharaj considered him to be his guru and respected him in such a way. Our whole tradition, you can say, our whole fellowship uh, in our mandal, our sant mandal, our puja guruji uh, belongs to the mandal of Sadguru Muktanand Swami. So his ancestry lines up, his lineage lines up to Sadguru Muktanand Swami. So we are very fortunate that such a saint in the form of our Puja Guruji now at present time is amongst us. Secondly, Sadguru Gopanand Swami. Swami was the master of yoga and he was very educated and beyond that, just like how Bhagwan Swaminarayan showed miracles when he was on this earth, Sadguru Gopan Swami also showed various kinds of miracles, but he was a very, very, very educated saint, not on this earth alone, but in the knowledge of Brahmvidya and Parabrahmvidya, meaning the knowledge of one's own self, the Atma, and the knowledge of Bhagwan himself, who is Paramatma. Third, Nityanand Swami. He was a bo born poet, and he was actually educated in the Vedic scriptures on this earth, and he was never defeated in any kind of debates, because whoever de uh, whoever debated against him would lose due to his knowledge. Not only that, but by the grace of Sriji Maharaj, because Bhagwan was also with him, and he was the author of many books. Lastly, Sadguru Sukranan Swami. Now he is the secretary of Maharaj. You know, just like how any great person needs you know, a person who can write him letters or any other thing and edit literally works. Uh, Swami did all this for Maharaj. And at that age, when the compilation began in 1819, Swami was only 20 years old. So these are the compilers of the Vatshramud who are, you probably have heard of, but just to recap for all of you. Moving on, the Vatshramud is divided into 10 sections. To be particular, meaning Bhagwan did not only stay in one area and spoke. You'll see when you open the book up that there's Gadara, Sarangpur, Loya, Karyani, Panchara, Vartal, Amdavad, all these different kinds of village names. And you're probably thinking, why is there village names? And then why is there dash one, dash two, dash five? Meaning, in the Vacharma, Bhagwan did not only stay in one area, but as he moved around in these different different areas, Bhagwan himself, wherever he went, these santos would go and compile. And there they would put, if he was in Sarangpur, he would put Sarangpur. If he was the second Vacharma, he would put Sarangpur second. So on and so forth. Just to give you a brief idea of the Vacharma. Now, why is it authentic? particularly inside, the philosophy itself is the most important. But moreover, in the beginning, there is a paragraph which addresses Bhagwan's, obviously before that, the date, pretty much in Titi, meaning in Indian calendar terms, exactly what Bhagwan Swaminarayan was wearing, the location, the assembly, who was sitting, santos, devotees, and where was Bhagwan sitting, what direction was he facing, all these details are mentioned in the Vachanamud. No other scripture up till today has such kind of detail of God himself in this particular fashion where these compilers were so attracted to Bhagwan, were so engrossed in Bhagwan that they compiled each and every second, each and every moment, just like if there was a video camera there for you recording constantly with the battery that never went out, meaning with recording film that did not go out. Such kind of, you can say, technology, not so, but you can say by Nansanto, their visual visualization of writing all these particular details down for our benefit, for our visualization, that's why when one reads this beginning paragraph, 
one should meditate upon Bhagwan and one should see that Bhagwan is sitting in that particular area and he is speaking to me and I am sitting in that assembly. That is what that is for. So now we've talked about that and I want to just particularly mention what it overviews, meaning what is inside the Vachanam. I said principles and philosophies, but just to get a little more in depth, it contains the gist, meaning the nectar of the Vedas. It contains Atma realization. It talks about Upasna, the manifestation of God on this earth. The God realized Sadpurush, Ekantik Dharma, spiritual state of Gunatit, principles to attain Atyantik Moksha, the mind and its nature, vicious natures, Sobao, how to destroy them, the glory, the importance of God in the Ekantik Sant controlling our senses and mind, faith and refuge, so on and so forth. Meaning, just like how Puja Guruji said, that there is not one kind of disease that this Vajramud cannot cure. There's numerable, numerable topics that the Vajramud has that are so important that uh, even by just reading a particular Vajramud, one can really feel that Bhagwan is speaking to oneself. I mean, I myself, sometimes when I'm reading the Vachamrit, and if I'm bothered by, uh, you know, some kind of nature or some kind of problem, sometimes I just open it up, and in the middle, I just start reading. And that particular problem that I was troubled by, that exact line speaks to me, meaning when I read it, and my problem is solved. Meaning Bhagwan is always manifest even through his scriptures. I'm reminded of a story of um, one time our Puja Santos were in an another temple living there and there um, this white Caucasian American uh, came there and Puja Surat Swami, who lives here, he gave him a Vachnamrut and just told him to keep it, meaning it was in Gujarati and obviously he could not understand or he could not comprehend Gujarati but he just told him to keep it. Now that person kept it in his room and one time the Vacharamu, I don't know what happened, but his home burned down, his whole house burned down, but the Vacharamu himself itself did not burn at all, meaning his whole house was burned, but the Vacharamu, it was sitting in this one area on this one table, nothing had happened to it, meaning that Bhagwan lives inside of the Vachramud, Bhagwan speaks through the Vachramud. That's why it's so important. And we should read it, even if we don't understand it, because Maharaj's words are like viable seeds. Someday, they are bound to sprout. Meaning, if not, today we don't understand it. When we understand it, one day, they will sprout. On the screen, I wanted to share with all of you, if you haven't been to a museum, or if you haven't really s uh, been to Gadpur, and seeing the real Vachamrut itself. And the Vachamrut itself looks like this. It's Gadara, first chapter, fifth Vachamrut. It's in, it's written in Gujarati, and it, this is actually the original manuscript itself. At that time, they had these kind of pages, but this is actually the manuscript in itself, and uh, the compilers had composed it. You can see that it's beautiful handwriting. Not only that, but uh, how neat it is, and the Santos recorded it for our benefit. So the reason why I conducted this lecture on the Vachramrut is because we've been mentioning it, I've been mentioning it myself, which is Swami has been mentioned different various points all this time that in the Vachramrut this, Mata just said this in this Vachramrut, etc. But what exactly is it? Why is it so important to our fellowship? Why do we take it as a reference for us why do we under why do we take it as a reference that so much so that we make it the base of our whole conversation? <coughs> That's what I wanted to clear up with all of you that did not know. And for those who are new, this is uh, the main scripture of this fellowship. Just like how the Bible is important to Christians and is the f base foundation of Christianity, the base foundation of this whole uh, sect is the Vachamrut. So please read it. If you read it in English, you can just type in Google, Vachamrut English, you'll find a PDF. You could read that. It's the same exact translation. 
If you have another English edition, no problem. But if you read it on a daily basis, even one page, I'm sure, as Bhagwan has said, that one day it will sprout and will enlighten your life. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Nari. Bhujya Rushi Lop Swami is now going to take his lecture. Jay Swami Nari. वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शनम् मंदहासरुचिरानाम् बुजम् पूजितम् सुरनरो तमेर मुदा धर्मनंदनमहम् विचिन्तये धर्मनंदनमहम् विचिन्तये श्रीगणश्याम महाराज नीजे और बिलवड़ गणश्याम महाराज Pathmik Achu for Liberation, Pujya Path Guruji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. 138th Chapter of Bhakta Chintamani We are discussing about various incidents happened in the life of devotees in which they found the presence, meaning divine presence and some divine help by Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Now today, Sadhguru Niskuranan Swami disclose the another two secrets such incident to us and for that we should now read from Bhakta Chintamani. In the one thirty eighth chapter, Sadguru Sri Nishkudanan Swami wrote Danya Danya Jetal Pura Gama Vale Jene Karyuni Jadhama Tema Mare Papi Nara Nara ते पन न जाय जमने द्वार ते मा पर जा आप्या वाले बहु जाने छे जन गाम ना सहु मोटा मोटा करया जा जगन खुट्या न ही गृत गड अन्न Sadhguru Nishkunan Swami Rat, some incident happened in a town of Jaitalpur. There are so many devotees in Jaitalpur village at the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Most of them the Brahmins. And to and for the benefit of Brahmins, Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself had organized uh, sacrificial ceremonies on very grand level in Jaitalpur. In those sacrificial ceremonies, Bhagwan also invited so many thousands of Brahmins and not only invited but Bhagwan himself fed him what they like. And even though there are all only a limited foodstuffs, ghee, sugar, flour and everything, only a limited stuff. But still, because of Bhagwan's divine power, there is thousands of Brahmins. 
they were filled by devotees still the food stuff remain as it was this is what the divine power of bhagwan swami narayan but sadguru niskunanand swami also says that not only this much incident but there are so many many personal experience by some such devotees in a village but swami says if i write down every incident in a book then book will be a uh, very very huge and that's why i sit uh, i write down only some selected incident and for that swami write down two incident from this jatalpur village now first of all by reading these two incident i got a message from this incident that whenever we have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan himself or whenever we are doing darshan in a mandir or if someone not daily come to mandir but in early morning when they perform their daily puja at the time also they should, at least they should detach themselves from their relatives this is what the message from this two incident from jatalpur because when bhagwan himself graces by his darshan in daily puja bhagwan himself appear in our puja as we invited him to come to our puja after having bath and after having clothing and etc bhagwan himself come to our puja daily but if we remember in our mind other than those of bhagwan swami narayan then bhagwan disappear from our puja in the same way when we are doing darshan of bhagwan in a mandir at the time we should not think anything in our mind outside from maharaj otherwise what happen let we see in the bhakta chintami there are many brahmin devotees in a jatalpur village and out of them one devotee his name was dayaram he was also a brahmin he was a very staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan he follow each and every command of bhagwan he never disobey any or he never lapses from his five vows once upon a day he got a darshan of bhagwan bhagwan swami narayan himself came to his home divinely and at that time bhagwan came there with his manki godi and one of hand of maharaj was a garland of flower and the other hand a stick now when maharaj came to dharam's home dharam got surprised how is it possible that bhagwan swami himself and alone come to me there are no duties there are no any santos nothing and him alone he got a surprise but he welcome maharaj he offer a nice seat to sit on and requested maharaj maharaj please sanctify my home now after that dharam also feed a man ki gori because he understood that man ki gori is not only an, an animal but man ki is also a liberated soul he also coming with maharaj from aksardham and that's why he understood man ki gori's glory in the same way that he understood the glory of nan santo now he also feed some grass to man ki and then he sat down near maharaj and he requested maharaj maharaj if you really please upon me and that's why you came here to my home to give me your darshan but it is my request to you please stay for more i prepare a meal for you and after having dinner you may go from here 
Then another request put before Maharaj by Dharam. Dharam requested Maharaj, Maharaj, please stay here for more time. Because my sister, she is living in another house. And if you stay here for more, I'll call him here. Because she also desire for your darshan. Now, Maharaj didn't say anything. But when Dharam requested for staying more, then Maharaj himself spoke to Dharam. Dharam, I am not specially come to you for your benefit. I actually, in a way, I am going to, uh, I want to go to Daban to take a duty to Aksardam. And that's why I, Andrut, I came here for your benefit of Darshan. I didn't want to stay here more. And saying this, Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself gave a garland of flower to Dayaram. And then Bhagwan himself said, If you want to call your sister, please go, but listen. Come fast because I have no time. And when Dharam went to call his sister, in the same time Bhagwan disappeared from Dharam's house. Th this incident teaches whenever we have a darshan of Bhagwan, at the time we should not remember, we should not uh, remembrance of any relatives or any other devotees. Even though Dayaram has no any kind of attachment with his sister, he understood his sister is also a duty of Bhagwan Swaminar and that's why he understood his sister's glory as a devotee. He didn't understand his sister as his sister, but still he remembered at the time he had a darshan of Bhagwan. Then Bhagwan disappeared from his home. And that's why whenever we are standing before Bhagwan in a mandir or whenever we are performing our puja at the time, we should be conscious, we should put our full attention only and only for the darshan of Bhagwan. If we remember anything other than God, then Bhagwan himself disappeared from before us. Now, then after, what happened, let me see. When Dharam came back with his sister, then he could not found Maharaj in his home. He searched out all of his, all the other rooms of his home, of his house, but he could not found Maharaj there. Maharaj was not there. Now, Dharam understood. He thought that the other uh, there are many of the devotees in the village, and that's why Maharaj might be in their houses, and that's why, for a darshan of Maharaj, for searching Maharaj, Dharam and his sister, they went one house to another, they meet one devotees to another, but all the devotees they deny, they said no. This is not a time that Maharaj come to our village. Because at the time Maharaj is actually staying in Kutch. He was traveling and sanctified due to his house in Kutch region of Gujarat. And that's why the devotees asked Dharam, how can it possible that Maharaj right now in Kutch and how is it possible he is present here? Then Dharam saw all the devotees, the garland of flower. Dharam said, Before I came to your houses for searching Maharaj, Maharaj gave me this garland of flowers in my house. And in this way, Dharam explained everything that how Maharaj came in his house, how he feed monkey, guri, grass, and everything. How Maharaj gave him a garland. What Maharaj says him about 
to uh, about his visit to Daban. Everything. Then the the devotees are also very good status in satsang. They have also some uh, got some high spiritual level, and that's why the devotees of Jatulpur they also accept Maharaj's presence was there. But they said, "Daram, you are very." great and very fortunate person in a village so that Maharaj himself came to your house to give you darshan. Actually right now Maharaj is present in Kutch but in his divine form he came to you for your benefit of darshan. Then the Aram understood Maharaj is present before me in his divine form. And then he remorse in his mind that if I didn't request Maharaj for staying more for benefit of darshan for my sister, then I may have a chance to offer a, some food, offer some dinner to Maharaj. But now there is nothing in his hand. In this way, Bhagwan Swaminar himself give his evidence that I am a supreme God. I can do what I can wish. I can take a thousand many other forms. I can be present in any time, any, any place and I can give a darshan. Even though I am staying at one place, I can give a darshan to at another place at the same time. Now let me see the another incident. In another incident, Nishkura and Swami read down in 138 chapter of Bhakta Chintamani. Swami says the another devotee, another Brahmin devotee in the same Jatalpur village. His name was Joito. Now, Joito was also a staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He also followed each and every command of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and he also understood Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the Supreme Lord and he also understood. Bhagwan's Nansanto's glory and some devotees' glory. Now he also behaved very, very humble with the other devotees. But just as we know, who come on this earth, he had to leave this earth one day. The death is certain, but the time of death is not certain. In the same way, Dharam also, uh, sorry, Joita Bhagat also have a short period for his life. But he could not know about his death. We could not know what will happen in the future, but Maharaj and some Ekandik Sant of Maharaj, like Guruji, they knew about our future. What will happen to us tomorrow? They know. In the same way, Bhagwan Swaminarayan appear in the house of Jaito. This time, Bhagwan also appeared divinely. When Bhagwan Swaminarayan came to Jaito's house, Jaito welcomed Maharaj and he also gave him a nice seat and Bhagwan sat on the seat. Now Joito also sat uh, on earth with folding his hand. Now he requested Maharaj, Maharaj, now this is beyond my fortune that you come to my home. Give me a chance. Please stay for some time. I will prepare a meal for you. After having dinner, you may go if you really want. Now Maharaj said, okay, I have time for staying more and I stay here and after having dinner, I will go. Joito had prepared a nice food for Maharaj and after completing dinner, Joito offered Maharaj some mouth freshness. After having and after completing everything, Mara sat on his seat and Joito also with folded his hand, he also sat down on earth. 
Now Maharaj says to Joydo, I am specially coming today for you. I want, I'm going to tell you uh, one truth. And I'm going to tell you one important thing. So be conscious. Don't forget your death is near. After a month, when you will go to a well for a bath, at the time there is no sorrow, there is no any uh, water connection in a house. And that's why people have to go for bath and uh, when they need water, they have to use a town well. In the same way, Joito also use a well for uh, every every day bathing and uh, every use of water. Now in the same way, Bhagwan saying that when after a month you will go to a well for a bath, at that time and accidentally you fell down in the, in the well in the deep water, you lost yourself. But remember, I will come there. I will divinely present there and I myself come with my santo to bring you in Akshardham. This is also truth. Your death is sure, but I myself will come there to bring you in Akshardham. Now, Jyotu had no worry because he was the devotee of Bhagavan Swaminar. By keeping a company of santo, by listening discourses from santo, he understood that one day, either today or tomorrow, I will have to go, I will have to leave this body. And this is my fortune that Bhagavan Swamina himself come to me to inform me about my death and he'll give me surety that he'll surely come at the time of my death. That's why I have no worry. But Bhagavan Swamina himself says him, don't disclose this secret about my arrival at that time of your death. Inform only a single person and be sure that person is also a deity of mine. Again, in the same way, just as Dharam had also requested Maharaj for staying more because of the uh, benefit of his sister, in the same way, Joito also requested Maharaj. Maharaj I understood what you say about my death. Now I have no tension, I have no any kind of bully desire and nothing. But Maharaj, please stay for more. My sister is in another room. She always desire for your darshan. If you stay here for more, I'll call him. I'll call her. And if she has a darshan of Maharaj, meaning your darshan, so will be very joyful. Maharaj said, okay, you may go. And when Joito went out from the room, Maharaj also disappeared from the room. Then when after some time, Joito came back with his sister, then he couldn't find Maharaj there because Maharaj is already disappeared from the place. Joy the remorse in his heart. But he had no any chance. Maharaj divinely appeared there and specially Maharaj tell him that I'm specially f coming for, for you, not for any other person. And Joy requested Maharaj for his sister. Now, they found a plate in which Maharaj had taken his dinner. Now they have only this much, uh, this is uh, evidence that Maharaj was come there. Now, in the same way, just as Dayaram didn't find Maharaj in his home, in the same way, Joyita also did not find Maharaj in his house. 
now then joito explained what maharaj had said him about his death after a month to his sister his sister was also a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and that's why according to maharaj condition joito had explained to his sister and he also instructed her that not to say this truth anybody now the month is passes gradually joito in his mind he became very very joyful and enjoy our bhajan of maharaj his chanting swami narayan swami narayan day and night because he knew he knew that my death is near and maharaj himself promised me he'll surely come at the time of my death that's why he had no worry no any desire nothing now when time will come after a month from maharaj instructed him about his death joito went to the well and accidentally he fell down to well and in deep water he met a death now at the same time bhagwan swaminarayan himself come there and not only come there but even though bhagwan swaminarayan divinely come there still everybody who were present over there near the well they all got the darshan of bhagwan swaminarayan and they all witnessed the incident that bhagwan himself come to take his duties now in this way sadguru niskuran swami had written these two incident of jatalpur village and the another two incident from some other village sadguru niskuran swami will describe on uh, describe in next sunday by saying this jai swami narayan श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय श्रीपतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधरमात्मज वासुदेव हरे म